Well, hello everyone, and thank you for choosing to click on this video. The 30 Days of Taker video series continues. We're on day 23 now. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. And today is for you. It's Q&A time. Thanks to everyone that went to OTR Central on Twitter and tweeted your questions for today's Q&A. It's all about the Dead Man's Return from WrestleMania 20 to WrestleMania 30, basically. So you got about yourselves a 10-year stretch here, all types of questions. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Uh, Alex is going to kick us off by asking, as having an opponent, as for having an opponent around WrestleMania 21, do you think Mordecai could have worked well with Taker? Like Mordecai was one of those gimmicks that, to me, it seemed like it was custom suited. The gimmick was to go against Taker, um, but then the performer wasn't very good. Uh, <laughs> as far as like. You know, I, I, I'm loathe to say, like, his WrestleMania 21, him and him and Randy Orton was very good. So, I, I, maybe it would have worked to a degree, but it wasn't. It wouldn't have been Randy Orton. So, I, I, I have no issues with what they did at 21. MC17 Clark asks, what feud do you think was worse? Taker versus Kali or Taker versus Heidenreich? Ooh. Bad, bad. Damn, that is an excellent question. I'll say Heidenreich. Ugh. That was a dude that, oh, he sucked. Um, also, is this feud with Kane in 2010 the worst feud of that 2010 year? Why or why not? No, the worst feud of the year was John Cena versus the Nexus. Or, uh... WWE versus the state of Connecticut trying to get Linda elected to the Senate. Those are the worst rivalries of the year. Remember how bad 2010 was? Oh, God. So, no, I don't think the Kane Taker one in 2010 was the worst one of the year by any stretch of the imagination. Kieran Chase. Do you think WWE should have had Cena turn heel by cheating to break the streak? Um, if they had maybe done it, like, earlier in his career where you were going to get years of return on the investment... Shit, yes. God, could you imagine? But, you know, if you had gotten to the point where you're saying, like, hey, it's 2012, 2013, we want Cena to break it, I would say no. Because you don't know how much longer Cena's going to be there. Um, but if you were going to do it and it lined up right, like, man, that would have been something, wouldn't it? James Faluka, how cool would it have been to see Taker win a world title with Paul Bearer at his side in either 2004 or 2005? I'd agree that would have been really cool. Um, certainly didn't work out that way, but would have been nice to certainly have seen. Uh, Ryan Gorman. I've always thought that since Brock ended up breaking the streak the next year anyways, Punk should have gotten heavy consideration to end the streak at 29. His heel run was going well then, and fair or not, he had a ton of heat over the Bears stuff thoughts. Um, I'm glad, Ryan, that they didn't do what you did because you think about it, Punk was gone within a year anyways. So imagine dropping the streak to somebody that's not even going to be there for a year. And we can knock the decision to make Lesnar less, less be the one to break it. And that was stupid. It was stupid then. It will always be stupid. Period. And even Taker freaking agrees. Kane freaking agrees. Austin freaking agrees. Like so many people agree how stupid that was. Um, But Punk? No. No way. Uh-uh. No. Principal NYNB. Who did Taker have his best SmackDown feud with out of these four? Angle, Orton, Edge, or Batista? Mm -hmm. One of these four led to a WrestleMania main event. Um, so that Taker-Edge one certainly has to be in consideration. My personal favorite is him and Batista. That's, that's the feud that I enjoyed the most. Alwyn to the, to the what? I don't know. He just has Alwyn to the. Uh, if you had to book someone beating the streak at WrestleMania 30, who would you have chose? Um, even at the time, like 2014, if you're going to have somebody break it, you want somebody to break it, then it's going to make them. It's like going to take them to a whole nother level. Um, imagine having Roman break it in 2014 at WrestleMania 30, and then he comes out the next night. Says it's my yard now, bitch. And then the next week he comes out and he's the tribal chief. Like, that would have been massive. Certainly would have been a hell of a lot better than what we got. Because you could even work the 
Uh, Taker was really bad. He was concussing into the fact that, you know, Roman's that dude. Uh, so that should have been the guy. If they were going to do something, like you could see that they were going to get really behind Roman anyways. If they were going to do it at that time, it should have been him. It absolutely should have been him. History Guy 007. Looking back, would you have had Taker versus Cena wrestle at WrestleMania 30? Um, you know, when you're thinking about it like an anniversary show, 30th WrestleMania. Yeah, like it's 2014, so while Cena wasn't truly completely 1,000% full-time, he was still around um, enough. Like, yes, I much rather would have had that at WrestleMania 30. I, I would totally agree with that. Kyle Garner, 92. I'm from Indiana and was in the crowd to personally see the Punjabi prison match Taker had with Big Show at Great American Bash in 2006. My apologies. My sympathies. What did you think when you first saw this match and some of Taker's questionable feuds versus this time period? Uh, the questionable feuds during that period, I can say that it reminded me some of the early 90s. They're not all going to be winners. But when you get the winners, by God, you better get the most out of them. And that's what I think of during this stretch of Taker's career. He had some stinkers. Uh, but man, when they were right, the Ortons, the Batistas, the Edges of the world, they were really, really right. Um, Joseph Moran. Were you surprised when Paul Bearer turned on Undertaker to be with Kane at Hell in a Cell 2010? Paul Bearer turning on The Undertaker would never surprise me because he had already done it before in his career, so I wouldn't be surprised if he came back and didn't did it again. No surprise at all, actually. Gambit190, if you could pick one person from this time period to have ended the streak, who would it have been and why? Um, I already mentioned the Roman thing. Like, If you were insisting on doing it at 30, then he needed to be the guy. Um, other than that, no one? Mm -mm. No one? Mm -mm. No. Only other way, and you have to hear me out because this is going to sound like some breakfast club bullshit, but if you'd have done it at 28, the end of an era match, you still would have been 19-1. It would have been Triple H that beat him. Praise God, he had wrestled him twice before and lost at Mania. Like, third time was a charm. His friend, his best friend was a special guest referee. You know, when you think about that, like, that might have even been a better place. Because at least you could say that, while Triple H certainly didn't need it, and it's not helping anybody younger get over, it's still at least something that would stay with the company long term. And, you know, talking about the end of an era, like, it would have made some sense then. But, no, nah, it probably had to be Roman. And that was the only one. Horror Movie Review 73, where do you rank Undertaker's feud with Randy Orton in 2005 in terms of Taker's best rivalries? I certainly think it lands in the top 10, and I might make an argument for top 5. That's, that stuff was really, really good. And Taker came along at the perfect time in Orton's career because he had just come off the Evolution thing, and his first kind of breakout as world champion didn't go so well. Like I felt like he was maybe going to flounder a little bit, like... Taker meant a lot to Randy Orton's career, and you, you always hear like T Orton kind of express like how, how much he appreciates what Taker did for him, because he did do a lot for him. So uh, certainly top 10, maybe top 5. Karen Stanfield, if The Fiend and Taker don't have an interaction or a future match, then is The Fiend character done as there would be no one else to avenge from Bray's past? No. I think you can do all types of different things with The Fiend's character. It doesn't have to be done that way at all. Would have been nice to have had a fiend-taker interaction, a fiend-taker feud. You know, like, I maybe would have, if it would have been able to work out, would have done it at another big show that wasn't WrestleMania. Like, maybe you do it at a SummerSlam or something. It would have been kind of cool to see. Uh, Stephen Hilton, 92. Thoughts on Undertaker's match with Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 25? Do you view it as one of Taker's greatest? Yes. Absolutely. Is it his best match ever with Shawn? Ooh. Because I could go to Bad Blood 97, the Hell in a Cell. Like, you guys can debate that in the comments. Which one of those taker Sean matches was better? Was it WrestleMania 25? Or was the Hell in a Cell match at Bad Blood 97? It was Bad Blood 97. Like, that was a badass Hell in a Cell match. I was the first. Like, it's one of the greatest still to this day. Featured the debut of Kane. Like, everything about that worked so magnificently. And everything about WrestleMania 25's match worked magnificently, except somebody was an idiot and put it in the middle of the car! Dumb! Fix that teeth and ask. Nexus helped bury Taker alive at Bragging Rights with no follow-up. I had almost even forgotten about this. Would it have worked to have Taker faced all six members of Nexus in the handicap match at WrestleMania 27 to end the streak? No. That would have, for those guys at that time, would have pissed people off. 
Um, now, he certainly, you could be you know, talking to the names I kept bringing up, Roman Reigns. Uh, maybe if Wade Barrett would have been able to stay consistently healthy, like that would have been a guy you could have potentially considered, maybe. But um, no. Would have liked to have seen something happen at 27 with him, maybe, or at a different show, maybe, to kind of pay that off. Wrestling rant. Since WWE clearly wanted the streak to end someday, clearly. You'd think this run of matches had some of the best options to end Taker's streak, and yet they still somehow picked the worst one? God dang. Like, ain't that the truth? Like, realistically. Like, you look, 2004 to 2014. Let, let's, let's run them down. Kane in, at 20. But at Orton at 21. Mark Henry at 22. Batista at 23. Edge at 24, HBK 25, HBK 26, Triple H 27, Triple H 28, CM Punk 29, and then you give it to Lesnar, the guy that absolutely positively did not need it. Um, yeah, like, it's crazy. I don't know if it's truly the worst option to end it, because if you'd had Sean end it, like, he wouldn't be there. Even I alluded to a little earlier, at least if he did Triple H, he'd be around, but yeah, he also doesn't need it. Like, the thing about that is you want that to be a career-defining moment. You want that to be somebody's, like, Jericho, I beat Stone Cold and The Rock in the same night to become undisputed champion type of thing. You want it to be Miz beat John Cena in the main event of WrestleMania 27 type of thing. Like, that, you want it to be the type of thing that somebody builds an entire career around. And the problem with giving it to somebody like Lesnar was, it's just, it's a notch in the belt. But it's not defining his career. And that type of thing, that big of a deal, needs to define a career. So, in some ways, I could still argue that they absolutely picked the worst one, and I can't imagine for the life of me why Vince thought this was such a good idea. Like, if, there are lots of things that I could ask Vince. Now, there are lots of questions I would last, like to ask Vince. It's kind of racist ways and some other things. But it, truth be told, if I met him in person and I had the opportunity to ask him one question, like, the question would either be, how the hell would you keep, did you keep the show going at Over the Edge 99? What the hell's wrong with you? Or even then, like, realistically, like, why the hell did you think it was a good idea to end the streak, you dummy? Like, seriously, like, that's how much it aggravates me to this day. Mark Whalen, 67. Has anyone ever had a better run of WrestleMania matches than Undertaker had from 21 to 28? You know, golly, like, it's hard to say. Like, you're going to have the people, like, will kind of ball wash like a Shawn Michaels or something, but... When you talk about notable feuds against notable opponents and matches that consistently delivered, it's got to be Taker's kind of eight-year stretch there. I would agree with that. Liam Patrick, 1993. Should Taker have retired after the third match with Triple H in Miami? Yes. My God, how awesome would that have been? The end of an era match and you retire after that? You go out 20-0? Oh, I would have loved that. Absolutely. Powers by and one. Your favorite WrestleMania Taker match from that period? Um... I still think it is 25, because that was everything I thought it was going to be, and then some. Like I said, still to this day, the only thing that sticks in my call is the fact that they put it in the middle of the show! Yeah, because the Breakfast Club just had the main event then. Callum Burgess, 14. Did you hear rumors about Abyss versus Taker instead of Mark Henry at WrestleMania 22? I will admit at the time I wasn't pl most plugged into the internet and the dirt sheets when it came to wrestling, so... I really had not heard that. I've seen people reference it, but I don't remember that. But then again, that's 14 plus years ago now, so maybe I did at the time. It just didn't really register with me. But no, I really don't remember those. Uh, Anderson Kodak asks, looking back at WrestleMania 23, um, I think him and Batista should have main evented your thoughts. Yes. Yes. Like it's hard because you could say, well, the other match was Sean and Cena. So, yeah, and I get that. Like, they were obviously very behind Cena. You know, it was HBK. Like, you would maybe have more confidence that Sean's going to deliver in a big way in a main event spot. So, that's kind of one of those ones. The, the rose-colored glasses you can have with the perspective of history says, why would you do that? At the time, it would make sense. It's a safer bet. Now, I'm also not surprised that Batista and Taker went out there and tore the house down at Ford Field, but... You know, if, I, if you're in that position, realistically, you're probably putting Sean and Cena in the main event, too. Like, so I'll be fair to the WWE on that one. Uh, so anyways, that's it for the questions I had. Uh, great questions you guys submitted. I enjoyed this one. Probably do one more Taker-related Q&A. It's going to be post-streak stuff, so that should be interesting and kind of depressing. Make sure you check out the rest of the videos in this 30 Days of Taker series. I will see you later.